Keith, so what kind of protein source uh, would be best to consume for muscle recovery, like after exercise? Okay, so right after you do uh, resistance exercise, a heavy exercise bout, it's best to take something or eat something that's going to give you a, a, a quick and prolonged increase in leucine in your blood. And th the best things to do that are whey proteins or milk proteins, because the milk is again very high in, high in leucine, gets in very quickly and it allows you to have the amino acids where your muscles can actually get them, use them and increase your protein synthesis. So leucine is an essential amino acid which plays uh, an important role in, in the muscle protein synthesis. Can you explain me a bit more about this? Yeah, so leucine is specifically very important because it is unique in the fact that the, the proteins within our muscles which actually activate protein synthesis, make our muscles make more protein, they are actually leucine receptors essentially. They monitor how much free leucine there is. And so the more leucine you have in the muscle, the more you have a stimulus for the muscle to do protein synthesis and to increase its mass. And what does it mean it is an essential amino acid? What are essential amino acids? So an essential amino acid is an amino acid that your body can't produce. Um, so it has to get it from, it from the diet. So our body produces a number of the amino acids within our body, but there are seven essential amino acids. And those essential amino acids are things that our body just can't produce naturally. And so either we get them from our diet or we get them from other protein that we break down. So if, we, if we're in a starved state, in a, in a fasted state, what you're going to actually get is you're going to get a, a situation where you actually have to break down muscle protein in order to synthesize new protein. And the net result is that you don't gain any protein. So you don't get bigger or stronger. When trying to build up muscle mass, you should eat sufficient protein with each main meal. Yeah. Like, is that correct? Or should I better eat like, 50 grams of protein directly after exercise. Okay, yeah, it's definitely most important to have at, at least a small enough but a sufficient amount of protein with each main meal and then to make sure that you have a little bit of extra right around your resistance exercise because that's really going to give you the extra power mm -hmm. that you need. And why is it so important to eat a, a protein-rich breakfast for resistance athletes? Okay, so, so a lot of these things where you're looking at um, something like protein synthesis, it goes up and down through the day. And it really goes with your supply of amino acids and your supply of food. When you wake up first thing in the morning, you're in a fasted state. If you're a resistance exercise person and you're really focused on it and you took a supplement right when you went to bed, you've got about eight hours of a fasting state there. And that's the longest time that you're going to be in a fast. In a fast, you're not going to be in a, in a state to maintain your muscle because you're going to start going to your muscle as a, as a source of energy. By taking in amino acids, by taking in a source of protein, you're going to give your muscles something other than their own, that, than that protein mm -hmm. to, that they need to break down. So it gives you an opportunity to take protein from the diet mm -hmm. and to use that to build your muscle rather than breaking down protein that is already there. And you told me that whey protein would be one of the best sources to take directly after exercise. And I know that a lot of resistance athletes take casein, which is also mm -hmm. a milk protein compound, right. at night before bedtime. Right. And so, so the difference between the whey and the casein is the whey is really quickly absorbed because um, it's, it's an acid-soluble protein and the stomach is an extremely acidic environment. The casein, on the other hand, when it gets into the acidic environment, it forms a clot and it doesn't break down quickly, it breaks down very slowly. And so that protein doesn't normally, when we're awake, seem to get in and be made into muscle protein. But there's some really interesting work that shows that if you take casein at night, it gets absorbed kind of around the same kinetics as whey. So there's something about the nighttime, mm -hmm. about our bodies, maybe about the, acidic, the acidity in our stomachs, maybe it goes down. But when we drink a casein or we, when we take casein at night, it seems to really actually work very well. It gets in, our muscles use it as a, as a protein source to, to increase their synthesis, and you can use it as, as a prolonged way of maintaining synthesis at nighttime so that you don't get into this negative balance that you normally do at night. Okay, and what's, what's the amount per serve of, of, of whey protein? Is it like 20 grams? Mm -hmm. or? 
Yeah, so, so the, the, the research to date su suggests that it's 20 grams gives you a maximal effect, that the effect of increasing up to 40 grams in a young adult doesn't seem to have any benefit. Interestingly, in older adults, where they tend to be a little bit less sensitive to amino acids, it actually takes 40 grams to get the maximal um, activation of protein synthesis. So if you're a young adult, um, the advice is to take 20 grams of, of, uh, of protein, which is about 8 to 10 grams of essential amino acids. And so that's going to be what you're looking for to, to kind of get the maximal effect of, of increasing protein synthesis after resistance exercise.